Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Artificial DM. Furries tend to permeate a lot of these terrible RPG horror stories, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of those furry stories. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with being a furry, but it does seem that most furries try to make more people into furries. It's almost as if furryism is its own religion. Instead of going door to door knocking and handing out pamphlets, they're just constantly in your messages or in chat and being like, no really, you are a furry. Here, look at this art. And attempting to bring in more people to become furries. The furry fandom is multifaceted and layered, just like any other culture and subject. And each of those groups can be broken down even further. However, it does seem there are a lot of degenerates in the furry fandom. Let's go ahead and look at some of these degenerates in RPG Horror Stories. Had a DM try to force furry and pedo elements into a game. I'm a 40 year old man now, and this was 20 years ago. I was invited to a game with a bunch of old school gamers, and I said sure. I knew one of the other players really well, and I joined being in his games. We get there, and it's some homebrew setting. There were some kind of animal races, and I picked some kind of Leonin gladiator type. Big mistake, because I guess the DM was a huge furry, and leaned into that really hard. Also, the DM turns out as the type of guy to wear the medieval puffy sleeve shirts when he plays. In the game, he puts my character as the bodyguard for a young girl, and starts pushing scenarios on me I am not comfortable with. An example would be, during the rainy night, the little girl cuddles up with you to keep warm. Which, that I can see, but then he tries to sexualize it even more as the game progressed. I just said I had a headache and left early. Maybe 10 years later, I heard he moved to Thailand and died of a heart attack. Anyway, I've always been a hardcore tabletop RPGer, but that experience almost turned me off of it completely. Alright, right away, do not implement pedophilia into your games. That's just a hard no. Aside from that, you have to remember that your players have a comfort level, and you shouldn't be trying to push their boundaries and make them accept what you want them to do. DM tried to force me into a character I didn't want, by Tales of the Past. A little backstory, I had never played D&D before, but wanted to try it. My boyfriend at the time played with his friends in real life and invited me to join their new game. I liked all of his friends, except for the DM. DM was one of those edgy, I'm an asshole so deal with it types. But I decided to give it a shot anyway. I am a woman, will be relevant. The game was going to be a futuristic cyberpunk setting that focused on stealth. During character creation, I wanted to be a lizard man, to which DM scoffed and was like, no, you can't be a lizard. When I asked why, he said, That's furry. Why do you want to be a lizard? I told him I just really like lizards and thought it would just be fun since it's a fantasy game. To which he said, Okay, tell you what. You can be a lizard, but you have to take a flaw that will make you easily killable. Because being a lizard, you would be easily detected. I was like, no thanks. Kinda defeats the purpose, no? Also made no sense about easy detection when my boyfriend was playing a woman with glowing rainbow feathers for hair. Just because a player has chosen a character race that is based off an animal, that does not make them a furry. How do I know that? Just because I choose to play as an elf doesn't mean I identify as an elf. That's ridiculous. So we ask about what species he will allow, which are only humanoid, but include people with animal features, such as anime cat girl style. Asking about this, he was like, no, it's not furry, it's different. Quick wisdom from Artificial. It says here in this book, Neko's are furries too. Fair enough. I then wanted to play a man with rabbit features, to which he also shot down with, you have to play a female. What? Why? We don't have enough female characters. It would balance it out. I wasn't intending on any romance or anything, but still, he refused. So, I decided it would just be better to back out of the campaign. Everyone seemed a bit disappointed, and the DM kept trying to get me to join, 
but I was already feeling some red flags. I offered to be the group artist, and I would draw out relevant scenes here and there, which everyone really enjoyed. Turns out, it was a good thing I didn't join. Sitting in on the campaign and just drawing, my boyfriend became the group punching bag. Anything he did in the game was met with insults, and the DM loved to punish the whole party whenever my boyfriend made any kind of mistake. I would talk to him at home about how it wasn't right, and he should stand up for himself, but he insisted it was fine, and his friends just joke like that. But the cruelty was seriously only ever directed at my boyfriend, and I could tell it bothered him. I also later found out the reason I had to play a female was because another player had a crush on me and intended to flirt with me in-game. The DM found hilarious and wanted to watch my boyfriend be uncomfortable because I would have been uncomfortable. I also sat in for a one-off they did where DM sibling played a chaotic neutral character that would attack and heal both party members and enemies at random without reason. DM thought this was hilarious and praised his sibling for knowing how to actually play chaotic neutral. It just seemed like everyone else was having a bad time. I really lost respect for the group over time, especially the DM, and came to games less and less until my boyfriend and I broke up. On good terms, we just weren't right for each other. All in all, not the worst thing but glad I avoided actually joining the game and dodged having an even worse story. I found a group some years later, and we've been playing together for a couple years on and off. I play a big dumb lovable lizard man barbarian named Dorf. I hope my ex has stood up for himself with his group. This is a good example of how some people view furries. They believe that anybody who wants to play as an animalistic character in game must be a closet furry. To which I say no. You can play an animalistic character in a fantasy game just like you can play a dwarf or a gnome or any of the other character races. It's part of the game. It's part of having fun. That point aside, this DM is a scumbag. He was willing to go ahead and betray one of his friends and intentionally try to get one of the other friends to flirt with the girlfriend? That's really scummy behavior. I'm glad OP was able to move on, find a better group for herself, and finally got to play as her lizard folk. Creepy Incel Furry Ruins the Fun of Everyone by New Joyzy. Now, let me start this off saying I have nothing against furries. I kind of am one myself. But everyone knows that people like this guy exist. A friend of mine, I'll call GM for this story, was running a new homebrew campaign and she wanted me to join. The campaign is set in a post-apocalyptic future in New England near the Canadian border. The backstory goes that 200 years before the game starts, World War III broke out and ended up wiping out most of humanity trying to use these nukes made to change up the human DNA sequence. Think the DNA bomb from Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, but many people were able to hide away in the bunkers fit with cryo chambers. On the surface, every human not in one of these bunkers were horribly disfigured or just turned into straight up mutants, but it also had an effect on the animals, making them literally anthropomorphic characters. Think BNA level minus the shape-shifting. We worked with this group called No Straight Roads, Basically, the NCR minus the cringe like taxes, the NCR. We played as a group of soldiers who got placed in a special forces squadron we ceremoniously called the Cheesers. This campaign setting actually sounds pretty interesting. A little bit like Adventure Time, Fallout, and Redwall. I think it sounds like a really fun setting and would be willing to give it a shot. Now, I know for those who have had bad experiences with furries and those systems, this sounds like a terrible thing, but actually it was great. Hell, I even decided to get my girlfriend to join since she hasn't had that much experience with TTRPGs and she's usually up for most things I'm into, so she decides to give it a try. Now for our cast. The party consisted of seven players including me and my girlfriend. Everyone in this, besides our main antagonist, is a great person who we still play with to this day. Most, if not all of which, are furries. DM, a friend of mine from high school who's running this show. She created this world and system with a few college friends of hers. Tater, 
a jolly middle-aged crocodile from Florida who acted as our tank. Boomstick, a badger with a love for explosives and my character's best friend. Henzik, a socially awkward magpie with a knack for robots. Tench, the sass master of the group. She was a diamondback from Arizona with the temper to prove. She was functionally a viper from XCOM 2. Damien Lockwood, my character, a human who woke up to this new world and learned to survive by himself, using hunting knowledge from when him and his dad went hunting before the wipe, what we're calling the apocalypse. I acted as the party scout and sniper with my girlfriend. Rose, my girlfriend's character, a dwarf rabbit who acted as our field medic and my character's love interest. What did you expect? And last but not least, our neckbeard, Lorenzo Whitefang, an uber cool wolf with a tragic past and a really bad dude. Original character, do not steal. This guy was as edgy as you could think, being a literal lone wolf, sat brooding half the time, and anytime we talk about backstories, he went off about how the blood of those I once held close fog my mind too much to remember them well. Worst of all, he tried to make a harem, not only out of NPCs, but the two female players too. The guy was someone from somewhere, none of us really knew. All I know is that he was a rando, while everyone else knew each other in some way, shape, or form. Now time for us to start. This happened a while back, and I have terrible memory, so apologies if some things seem a little vague, or out of order. Now then... The story starts as our characters are sitting in a debrief room, waiting for our handler to arrive. Everyone's talking and introducing themselves to each other, with Boom and Tater getting into an arm wrestling match. Everyone's laughing and joking around. Everyone, except Lorenzo. He's there in the corner, brooding like the edgy f*** he is. Then, the door opens, and there is the new squad's handler, a red-tailed falcon named Lilith. Hello everyone, my name is Lilith, and I'll be your new handler. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Everyone saying hello in their own little ways. Lorenzo then pipes up with a, Well aren't you a pretty little thing, in the way that would make an eldritch horror uncomfortable. Now, I don't know if DM didn't hear him, or she just ignored him, cause she simply moved on to the normal stuff. Let's cover another situation where he was acting as an ass in game. A moment I like to call the Chopper Incident. Choppers in this game are basically armored vehicles. Think the technicals from Borderlands. Anyways, we had a mission to capture an operative from a group of raiders or whatever you want to call them, calling themselves the Red Drakes. Now, this operative had disguised themselves as a refugee along with a few other members of the Red Drakes. They caused a large explosion and stole a chip we had recovered the session before from a boss, and drove out there in a stolen chopper. We of course give chase, pushing it off the road into the trees. We all get out and drag out our nice red drake friend. She's still alive. For some reason, we let Lorenzo do it. Needless to say, this was a mistake. Now then, let's play a quick game of What Will Lorenzo Do Now? Does he... A. Be calm and civil and do a nice orderly interrogation. B. Smack her around a bit and leave it there. Or C. Get another player character to do good cop and bad cop. If you guess, he threatened to rape her, her sister, and her niece, then castrate them with a searing knife. You guessed right. Congratulations, you won a lower faith in humanity. Needless to say, he got a firm warning from the DM, telling him if he pulled this shit again, he would be out. Now to start with the creepiness towards the women in the group. Now, as I said earlier, Trench was a diamondback rattlesnake that was functionally a viper. And if you know vipers, you know they have a tongue move that lets them pull enemies close so they can start their snake bullshittery. Trench could do that too. She manages to grab a guy that tried running and squeezed him to death, ending the mission. Lorenzo, just after this, goes up to her and spits out this gem of a line. You're pretty damn good with that tongue and squeezing thing. 
I have something you can wrap your tongue around and squeeze. The call goes dead quiet. Trench then shoots back with, If you mean strangling you to death, then happily. And besides, I doubt there's enough there to even do that. That gets a chuckle out of basically everyone. Well, except Lorenzo, of course. He then says he goes to loot bodies with an obviously shaky voice. This was before the chopper incident, so we weren't fully tuned in to his creepitude. If this was the only time he did this to a player and he stopped, it would have been fine. But he didn't. Instead, he changed targets. My girlfriend. Now, my girlfriend isn't what most people would call very outgoing. She's small, quiet, and pretty socially inept. Her words, not mine. Also known as the perfect target for a neckbeard. Now, since everyone was messing around and posting pictures about themselves, we posted plenty of pictures of ourselves. I don't know why, but this guy thought he could Mr. Steal Your Girl through this game. The flirtatious comments weren't very common at first, but got more common as time went on. My girlfriend didn't seem bothered by it, but me and the DM told him to cut it out. And one day, after grabbing some lunch and heading back home, I saw her sitting on the couch, obviously pissed. To confirm my suspicions, she starts ranting in Spanish, something she only does when she's really fucking heated. She shows me these DMs on Discord from the creep, saying how he could treat her ten times better than I could, and how I'm probably cheating on her. This next part would be fucked up even without context, but it makes it worse with context, so here you go. We're an interracial couple, I am African American, and she's Caucasian Latina. We've been dating since I was 14 and she was 15, and now we live together, being 21 and 22 respectively. Now for the finale. We obviously send these screenshots to DM, and she says if he does one more thing, he's out, and she tells him that. So in the game, we're about two hours in when me and her are doing some one-on-one -on -one roleplay that led to a fade to black. Everyone was okay with it, don't worry. Then Lorenzo pipes up. God, can you two get a damn room? No one wants to hear about your f***ing fantasies about some black guy. My girlfriend goes the f*** off. She starts going on about how he's the one that made everyone uncomfortable and how he's in no position to be saying sh Then Lorenzo starts with, This is why all you women are the f***ing same. You don't know when someone's the best thing for you. So you know what? I don't want your f n-word used whole he's probably a f too and he gets banned the session obviously ended right there and then and we took a few weeks break never heard from that guy again luckily after that me and girlfriend spent some needed time resting and relaxing together the story does have a happy ending though we're still playing in that game till this day and me and my fiance are getting married next year on our anniversary TLDR, creepy incel furry goes after the wrong girl and gets banned for being racist, homophobic, and an all-around jackass. Wow, the amount of hate that this guy is spewing because he wasn't able to win over either of these women is insane. Most incels are incels because they really are assholes deep down. I do appreciate that the DM was willing to step up and say, hey, cut that shit out. But in the future, if you have a player who comes up to you with messages from one of the players attempting to flirt with them, I think by that point, it's okay to go ahead and kick the player out. Or it's okay to go ahead and kick players when they talk about wanting to f*** NPCs. If you want to hear about more furry stories, then go ahead and click on this video here. Thank you to my patrons, and until next time, hope you feel inspired.